and we're back in the yard so we got this heat pump here apparently it's not working uh, so they have it on emergency heat mode i uh, haven't been inside yet but uh, we're going to check it out so here we go all right so it looks like it's a communicating system so it says press and hold for details no system alerts no it looks like it's just a service system Oh yeah, it's just a reminder. Okay, so yeah, everything seems to be fine. Uh, so they said that it froze up, um, but I just talked to the homeowner and basically it was frosted up, so that's normal. Uh, Cause it was in cooling and it's been pretty cold. We've been getting down to like 30 degrees in the evening. So I'd expect to see a little bit on there. Um, system status. Uh, filters have just been changed from what they told me. We're on idle. Okay, yeah, everything looks okay. We're going to go ahead and grab some tools, get set up. We're going to check the outdoor unit first and then kind of go from there. But we're going to just go through and test everything, make sure there's no problems. So we test the compressor heat. We're going to do the higher stage. Oh, it looks like it's only single. All right. So let's go check out the outdoor unit. All right, the unit is running. It's pulling about 15 amps. That should be somewhat normal for this. Oh, okay, so it has an ECM. So I'm guessing it's this black wire here. Yeah, so we're at two amps. All right, so everything's looking good so far. This is warm. It's pretty hot. Should be hot. Yep. Should be warm, yep. Cold. All right, cool. We're gonna bust out the thermal Im imaging camera. So here's a good way to just do some quick diagnostics. You can use your inf your thermal imaging camera, and we can tell that that pipe on the top, right, it's hot because that's our true discharge. Um, and then currently it is in heat mode, so the pipe on the bottom right, that is our discharge going to our indoor unit. And then the other two, uh, the one to the left and the one in the middle on the bottom, those are our current suction lines. All right, so the one in the middle is the uh, true suction. So no matter what mode it's in, it's always the same. Uh, we have our T TXV here, and this is our heating TXV. So we can see it's warm going in and it's cold coming out. And the entire coil is pretty cold, which it should be. So it looks like our refrigerant stuff is doing okay. We currently have our pressures and they're looking pretty normal. We have this 25 degree superheat, or I'm sorry, subcooling. My uh, other one is not working right now. The battery's died. I actually ran out of battery, so we're just going to switch this over, which is nice. And then we'll pop this on here. And we'll see what our superheat looks like. Okay. And I just need to relink it. So this is a nice thing. You can just on the fly switch it. You just have to relink it. Okay. So we have about 15 degrees superheat, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, but yeah, just to show you on the back here, see how it's blue? You can actually flip this, and then now it's red. So that's really nice, especially like when one battery dies. Outdoor unit looks good. All my amp draws are normal. So we're going to go ahead and scope out the inside. Okay, so we're just going to check the filter. They told me they changed it yesterday, but always check it. <laughs> For some reason, homeowners lie, but it looks good. All right, our coil is hot, so that's good. We're gonna go ahead and have this guy on wireless mode. Because it is a constant airflow. Uh, so we want to get an actual amp draw on that. We got to be quick, otherwise it might shut off because it is communicating. Uh, so let's take a look at our amp draw on our fan. Yeah, so that's pretty normal. I'm wondering if, the problem is, is I can't see how bad the old filter was. And they're, they're, nobody's here, so uh, yeah. The filter is probably plugged. And then there's also a floor filter. Uh, so I'm wondering if because it was double filtered, maybe, um, maybe that caused it. So anyway, I'm gonna get my meter out of there. 
uh, and then we will test the electric elements make sure those are all working because if there is something up with the heat pump the auxiliary heat should have kicked in so we'll go ahead and check that next all right so we're just in heat pump mode we got 98 degrees coming out which is really good our returns about 65 65, 75, 85, 90. So it's about 30 degree rise. So that's pretty good for a heat pump. And that's with no auxiliary heat. So, um, and I just noticed here, there's a filter in here. Um, so yeah, the, let's go see if there's another return somewhere. So the filter is not terrible, but when I pulled it out, um, I can hear the fan slow down. So it was causing some sort of a restriction. Plus you can see it's parachuting. So yeah, I'm going to tell them if they're going to put a filter, they need to do those poly, those really cheap, thin filters, like thinner than these, uh, because they're less restrictive. And I think they're just using it so stuff doesn't drop down in there. So that may have been the issue, because I don't know the condition of the other 5-inch uh, filter, because if that thing was plugged plus this, that could be it. There is another return upstairs that doesn't have a filter in it, so yeah. Okay, so I want to stop it, so I press and hold. Okay, and then we go previous, and I want to test indoor heat. I'm guessing that's the uh, heat strip, so we're gonna just make sure that those are working. Okay, we're gonna do, oh, uh, that's kinda cool. Yeah, it looks like we only have two stages, so we'll do that. That should energize all of our heating elements, so we'll go amp those out and make sure they're okay. So I love it when they put all kinds of stuff in the way where you can't test the stuff live. So it looks like the only option I have is to just clamp this. So we got 42 amps there. And I got about 42 amps, so I'm just assuming they're all working. Because uh, usually they're 20 each, so that would be two circuits. According to this, it looks like there's three of them. Yeah, I just can't, I can't get in there to test it. It's so annoying this yeah 20 amps on that one and there's another black one here yep 20 amps and let's try one of these red ones it's probably the same circuit yeah oh 18 amps yeah so all the electric strips appear to be functional yeah so everything appears to be fine so I'm thinking I'm thinking that that filter was dirty and then having that other filter in there was restricting airflow because when I pulled out that one in the wall or in the floor, I could hear the uh, ECM slow down. So usually when these slow down, it's because uh, uh, it's because it's less work for it. We're going to go ahead and put this back together. And we're going to call her good for now because I can't find anything wrong with this thing right now. Okay, so we have it in just heat, uh, auxiliary heat with no heat pump. It's uh, over 101 degrees still climbing so everything appears to be functioning normally so i really think it was a filter all right so i'm touching and holding and that should take it out test i wonder if we can throw it into um no we don't have defrost oh look so you can actually run it in everything mode that's cool but we don't need to do that we know it's working uh so what we're going to do is we're going to put the compressor heat mode again and then we'll go and see if we can force the defrost I'm supposed to go to force defrost to test com, and I have to hold it until it happens. Once it happens, then I have to remove it. And it's fast forwarding the timer, so I think I have to hold it for a while. Let's try this way. There we go. Okay. This pipe should be getting cold. Yep. And the fan cut off so it looks like defrost is functional Let's see what our okay reversing valve switch you can see the left one is hot on the bottom and it should start to get cold which it is yeah everything seems to be functional so i'm thinking it was the filter my screwdriver i guess wasn't conductive enough to force it so anyway uh yeah so I'm going to say this unit's good. I think the filter was bad and it probably caused some kind of lockout. Um, and that's what I'm going to tell my homeowner and we'll see if it, if it works because they changed the filter and then they left 
And when I got here, it was at satisfied temperature, which they were saying it was below satisfied temp. So if you have an issue with your system to save yourself some money, change the filter, let it run and see if you have any other issues before you call the expensive H HVAC guy. <laughs> so. Okay, so I wanna check one more thing um, before we go. We're gonna go to installer setup and I wanna check to see if the lockouts are set properly. So in this area, we do 40 for the auxiliary heat and like 20 degrees for the compressor lockout. Uh, let's see, no, no. Uh-uh. Maybe I can't set it, it might be automatic. Oh, there it is. Yeah, look at, they're both disabled. So let's go ahead and hit edit. Enable, next. This is the auxiliary heat. We're gonna set it to 40. Next. Now obviously it'll be more efficient uh, if we go, you know, a little bit lower, but, or a little higher. Now this one we want it our low lockout, so enable, next. And we're gonna set that to 20, whoops. All right, cool. So it is now enabled. So we hit done. It's gonna go back to our, our service menu. And then we hit back. And then we hit home. And there you go. And look at, look at our temperature now. It was 65 when I started here. So um, yeah, maybe it was a combination of the filter and the lockouts. But again, to get in there, you just hit menu. You go to service. And see where it says technician access you push it and hold it make sure it turns black otherwise it won't work and you just keep holding it keep holding it keep holding it and then this is going to pop up proceed and you're in the service menu so that's a nice function i wish all of these had that so yeah so we set the lockouts we'll see if that helps but i think it was the filter but anyway hopefully this helps you out when if you come across a situation like this because we come across calls like this all the time Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment to me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like the tools that I use, uh, pick them up on my Amazon store. And if you like the work socks, get them from Camel City Mill. Nighthawk 10 for 10% off. Thanks for watching.